Hi guys, welcome back to RC Pie. If you're new to the channel, thanks for joining us. And for everybody, if you've not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so that you know when we've got new videos available. It'd be a massive, massive help to me and doesn't cost you a bean. So today I'm pretty excited because I've just received my Charisma SA, it's a mouthful, SCA1E kit, the builder's kit for the 81 Range Rover, the 2.1 version. So it's got the, the tweaked setup in there with battery location and servo position and so on. Um, it's also got some of the tune-up items in here. So I'm pretty excited to build this. It'd be the first kit I've made for a while. So let's get it open and see what's inside and then we can get building. I have to say, I think this box is absolutely brilliant. You know, you've got the cutaways here. Those are great with all the sizes and scales. The things that you need for the kit, so that's useful. On the other side, just that nice graphic, the, the comparison between the outside and the inside. And of course, the top of the box, the main side. Okay, we've got the detail we need, but I mean, that's just perfect. Introducing the most beautiful vehicle in the world. It's awesome. You might argue with it, but it's a great front and a great graphic. It has to be said, they do a great job of getting everything into such a small box. If you compare that to like a, a Tamiya kit box, it's like half the size. But let's have a look how it's packed. Okay, kind of as you'd expect, I suppose. But the body shell is right on top. Oh, that feels solid. And then just a load of bags. No messing about, no fancy packaging, no big blown plastic, no cardboard sections, all very simple. So the manual, how good is it? Let's just have a quick flick, um, all your bump at the start in many languages. Recommended tools, the items you require for completion. Now I've not fully decided, I'm, I'm almost certainly going to put this on my Flysky GT5 um, and get a small receiver for that as well. Uh, ESC, I'm actually thinking of using the ISDT um, ESC70. I've bought one of those to try it and I've not had it in any vehicle so I think I'm going to put it in this and see how it goes. Motor wise, not decided whether to put a, a proper crawler motor in or a, more of a trail motor. So we'll have a think about that. Servo wise, I am going to just use a, an Amazon special. Um, batteries go without saying. Um, but yeah, this manual looks very nice and clear. I don't see any potential issues there. It all looks nice and straightforward. I wonder whether you get grease with this. Probably wouldn't use it anyway. Um, I'd use my own. But always interesting to see what they give you. And the body section. So that's all looking pretty nice. Let's see what else there is. Now everything here is marked in bags. Shocks in a bag. This. We don't need to go through all these, we'll see as we build, but all the rods, just seeing if there's any surprises as I go through these chassis in there. Now the wheels, they're slightly disappointing on what's potentially such a nice kit. Um, I was expecting the wheels to A, be silver, as they are on the box, not to need painting to get that. And B, I was hoping that these would be metal. Maybe I was hoping for too much. Um, so I don't know whether I'll actually use those wheels because I think it will benefit from a bit of low down weight. 
I think you get a pair of yeah, a pair of different bumpers on there. So you can have either the kind of standard Range Rover look, or you can go for more of a kind of trail adventure look with a winch on the bumper. So overall, this is really quite a nice build. Uh, the parts are good quality, the instructions are pretty clear, but it has to be said there are a couple of issues. Um, I found that there were a couple of steps where they're basically trying to force in too many things into one picture. It would be nicer if it was broken down into more separate steps, because often in an exploded view you can't tell which things you should put together first. So unless you've got a bit of experience or a bit of foresight, you can't always tell and you may end up having to go back, take things apart a bit, to then put them together in a slightly different order. There were also a couple of points where I'm not convinced that the instructions were quite right, where you've got two parts that are very similar, like the front and rear axles, and the um, suspension mounts that go onto those axles, it's unclear which one is supposed to go on the front and which one is supposed to go on the rear. Now, we could certainly argue that it doesn't matter. They do the same job. It's just a question of whether the screws go in from the left of the car or the right of the car. But if you put them on the way that Charisma perhaps didn't intend, and then you get further on into the instructions and find the picture appears to be different to what you've got, then that could shake your confidence somewhat in your overall build. In addition to that, I'd have to add that when you're popping the, the balls into the ball joints on the suspension rods, it's really not clear as it is with some manufacturers um, which side you should be pushing those into those ball ends. There's usually a very clear bevel, but that didn't seem to be the case with these Charisma ones. It could also be a little confusing when you've got like the kind of scale, or not scale, life size, real size diagrams in the instructions. And when you try and marry up the products like your suspension rods to those pictures, they're actually not quite the same length. So that kind of could shake people's confidence as well while it's building. Putting the gearbox together, uh, no major issues. Um, what is really quite nice is the, the instructions really clearly show you where to grease and where to put Loctite. Um, I have to say that I, I disagreed a little bit with where to grease and, and to put grease on a few other areas to where it said. But overall, it's a nice guide and would get people through the build quite happily, even if they're a total beginner. Another small gripe would be the labelling of the parts. Okay, so they come in bags and the bags are labelled, that's okay. But the small parts are all in separately sealed parts of these bags. And when you've got lots of different washers and screws, it would be quite nice if these were more clearly identified as once you've tipped them all out it can be quite tricky to work out which is which with some very very similar washers and screws and so on. I was just enjoying a bit of my system mechanics birthday cake there. Overall I have to say it was a very pleasant build. Um, no major issues at all uh, you know, apart from the, the obvious uh, blisters on your thumbs from having to tap so many machine screws into hard plastic, but I guess that just comes with the hobby. But it, it, was, it was pretty good. To be honest, I only got to any sort of issues once I got onto the bodywork, and some of that was my own fault, some of it, I think, is a bit of oversight from Charisma, um, some of the stickers, weren't quite right. The window masks are very good, but other things don't quite fit as they should. Um, the, the rear light stickers in particular are, I mean they look good, but they're not quite the right shape once you start wrapping them around. And they're also 
and they're lined up incorrectly for where the light buckets are behind them which is very very disappointing if you're actually going to put LEDs in there. The stickers that have annoyed me the most and have left me without any are actually the door handles which are far too big for a start, they're too big for the mouldings on the body and they're also the wrong colour, they're just weird. Um, so unless you are painting a white body, they're unusable. So that's very, very disappointing. Um, the mirrors, they are not a very good fit. Um, it says to use glue to fit those to the backing plates, but they don't really work very well. So you need to really put some, some shoe glue, something like that on there and really make sure that they're held on both with the pins and directly to the outside of the body. And there is also a strange crease going over the body, which isn't, isn't attractive. Now, once it's painted, it doesn't show up as badly, but it's just a bit disappointing, to be honest. One of the things that really surprised me once I'd put this together was that it's actually got front links that are longer than the rear, which, you know, is kind of against what you'd think. When you look at LCG builds, they tend to be longer rear links, but we'll see how that works. So here it is, finally, after I don't know how many days of bits here and bits there trying to get this sorted. The build was straightforward enough, a couple of issues as you've seen, but overall a fairly straightforward build. But the, the real difficulty for me has been sorting out the body. First thing was I was, I was rushing a bit because I was trying to get it done before coming away on holiday. Um, that led to a couple of mistakes, so I didn't actually get enough of the, the main body colour. Um, so we have got it a bit thin and we've got a little bit of um, blotching on top where you can see the paint's not thick enough and you can see the black back coat has come through a bit but a roof rack's going to sort that out in time. Um, we had a bit of an issue with the with the um, backing paint it didn't quite work so I had to get some brush on backing paint because it was it had gone a bit kind of speckly and was, was coming off a little bit coming off so I couldn't stick things to the inside of the body. Um, and then there was the issue of the mounting of the body. So the standard rear mount is more or less like that. Uh, so you've got these body posts here and then this kind of H frame above. Now I've tried to, tried to get it how I wanted it. Um, I chopped these down and made my own sort of mount sections on there. I chopped these posts down. But then I realised, oh no, that's no good anyway, because if I'm going to put an interior in, this won't work unless it goes through the interior. Then you've got the difficulty of, do I put the, fasten the interior to the chassis or to the body? Um, so a bit of, bit of fun and games with that. So on the front body posts, I just drop them down. I cut them a bit shorter, drop them down and put these sort of hinged magnets on there. You can see those on eBay and Amazon and everywhere that you can think of. Um, so those were okay on the front. That was relatively straightforward. Um, the rear, not so. So I'll show you what's underneath. Um, if I can pull this off, can't remember which way I decided. Seems sturdy enough. Right, so the front is straightforward and then the back there we go. Right, now I have got a lighting cable there. So, I'll show you the body in a minute. But the, on the chassis itself, I initially put the radio gear on the back, on that plate that's made for it, but then realised that with an interior, it was going to get in the way. So I've moved that over to the rock slider on the side there, and that seems okay. And actually, I think that's probably good for balance because the battery is slightly on the right hand side 
although the motor is on the left hand side I still think that extra little bit is going to help um, so yeah those are those front mounts now those are quite straightforward um, but the rear mounts I've added these brackets I've had to add on the two alternative uh, bumper mounts so those are on one and then another so that I've got two mounting points underneath and then these magnets screwed onto the back um, they are at a bit of an angle because these mounts that I bought are angled but that's okay because as long as you glue in the magnets so that they are level with this so mount them to it and then glue them then that's okay whereas if you just glued them onto the body they wouldn't be right and you'd end up bending your body uh, to get them stuck to the magnets which isn't what you want um, so that's what I've done on there uh, I'll move that for a sec and show you this <laughs> arguably aberration of a, of a mounting under here um, so my my interior is just mounted with velcro along the back and across the front these interiors these cheap interiors that you get on eBay and Aliexpress and so on you know they're not great this one came crushed um, but they can do a job for you to figure out what you're doing or if you just want a basic look so you know that the basic look you can see you've got an interior um, I've had to chop holes so that the transmission can go through and those are for the shock towers the rear shock towers so they can just go through a little bit um, but other than that it's kind of doing okay it's doing okay we've got the seat belt here for the for the action figure but the the magnets you can see those are sitting in that shoe glue and you can see that they're angled because they were mounted whilst fitted um, I've added LEDs myself um, and those front magnets were relatively straightforward so no no biggies there um, let's stick it back on the body and I'll tell you the other fun and games that I was having so one of the other things that's been taking a bit of time has been wheels and tyres now the standard plastic bead locks that you get with this thing I would say are awful they're very hard to fit because they're plastic unless you've pushed it together fully you're worrying about the, the screws stripping those threads out um, and because all the screws are around the hub then it's very very difficult to use a tool so I've started using a tool for putting wheels together putting bead locks onto tyres um, and it's been quite easy but with those there was no chance you couldn't use it so I tried and I tried and I tried and I couldn't make it work so then I've been doing other wheels and tyres these are the the wheels that come with this car now you can see they are they are smaller they are kind of more scale if you like um, so the plan was to use those initially and then try these these are Proline um, mud terrain tyres um, these are a class 1 tyre so you know it's still technically <laughs> scale um, but I did want to try these out um, so I mounted them on one set of wheels and then I've mounted them on this other set um, which again I thought would look quite nice they're quite a kind of scale design um, but I've tried to put these on this morning and they're actually they're too thick the hubs are too thick so that's not really worked so those will have to wait for another day on another wheel or I'll have to get some shallow wheel nuts but you can't actually get to the nylock on that stub axle so those are out of the window for the time being um, now these these wheels obviously are not standard these are fast tracks wheels because um, they're 
like proper scale Range Rover wheels they're beautiful but they come in at about 45 to 50 pounds for a set of those so what about 50 55 dollars um, so they are not cheap wheels but I'm sure you'll agree they're beautiful they just need a little hubcap there hubcaps did come with them but they're red and I'm not putting red hubcaps on beautiful expensive wheels I'd rather just leave the hole there um, but I think it, I still think it looks nice like this and with the body sitting quite low if we lift it up maybe a bit more off-roady but not my thing quite as much um, but I've just put the radio on and tried lock on these and they are rubbing a tiny bit there so if I'm going to use these I'm going to have to lift it a little bit which I don't think will compromise the look too much um, it's kind of a shame because it looks really nice sat a bit lower but there we go oh what else to tell you my number plates I'm sure you'll agree they're very very nice I'll leave a link to the fella that I got those from found him on Facebook he does amazing scale stuff himself so I'll put a link down to to him if you want to get in touch with him to get a set of those he's UK based and he's um, he's only charging I think it was six pounds for a set of might have been seven pounds for a set of number plates and he'll do them in any style you like so big shout out to him but all I want to do now is drive this thing. I hope you've enjoyed watching the building of it and hearing a bit about it. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else on this, please let me know. Just drop me something in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I'm going to take it out for a drive. If you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel at RC Pie and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.